so let's get that recording done. You are entering Boundaries Unknown, so sit back, shut up, and hang on. You are entering Boundaries Unknown, so sit back, shut up, and hang on. That'll do. And remember, with your vocals, you want to do it until you get it exactly right. So get it to a point where you're satisfied and then move on from there. Now, the first tool we'll use here in order to clean up the audio is the compressor tool. So we'll highlight the uh, audio by clicking that leftmost pane, go to our effect and compressor. The default values for this tool are negative 12, negative 40, there we go. So the threshold of negative 12, noise floor of negative 40, ratio of two is to one, attack time 0.2, and release time of one. So let's try that on for size. And that's what that's done. So the compressor tool uh, reduces, sort of flattens down uh, the levels within a certain range. So let's undo that by hitting Control Z and take another look at that tool. The threshold is where the tool takes effect. So in this case, negative 12. The noise floor is the quiet, quietest audible audio in your uh, in your track, you're above the level of background noise. This becomes important for the last step here where it makes up the gain to zero after compressing because we don't want to mess too much with that background noise or little incidental noises like, you know, lip smacking, breathing, uh, mouse clicks, especially if you're doing, you know, things like podcasts and the like. Now, my recordings tend to be fairly quiet, uh, you know, in terms of background noise. I can generally lower my noise floor a little bit and we'll see what that does for us. There we go. Let's try once again though, and this time lowering our threshold down to negative 20. And I think that's a better effect. We get more here than we would have and our overall volume of project looks better. We do have a little bit of clipping here, which we're going to address in a moment. Rather than applying this effect more, I'll just bring this up and explain the remainders now. The ratio here being two is to one is how um, heavily the effect is applied to the areas that reach above the threshold. So two is to one or you know, three is to one, four is to one, what ratio it gets affected at. Attack time is how quickly uh, the software will apply the effect once it realizes something is above the threshold. So an attack time of 0.2 seconds um, is the default. And in all honesty, I don't mess with this too much because that's a good all around effect. If you had things like instruments where it's a very short sound, something like, a, you know, a quick drum beat or something like that, then you may want a shorter attack time to give it a chance to, to really kick in. But if it's something very, very slow, you might find if it's a slow uh, vocal that doesn't, you know, change a lot quickly, you may be better served using a, uh, a less aggressive attack time. Release time is how quickly it releases or lets go of the uh, effect once it goes beneath the threshold. Now we're not going to um, go ahead and uh, and use this again. We'll hit cancel. And as I said, we've got some clipping here. Now, in general, uh, the last tool you'll use is the normalization tool, because what the normalization tool will do is to apply uh, a change in in levels uniformly to everything. So whereas the compressor will even things up, the normalization is applied evenly. Were I to apply it now, it's actually going to reduce the overall level here because I've got clipping. I've got things above my usual threshold of negative one dB. And this is what it'll look like. So that is in effect, normalize. And there's our negative one dB threshold and it actually lowers it down. Control Z will undo. A better idea would be to eliminate this uh, or limit it. So we'll use the limiter tool. And we don't have to be too dramatic here. A little will do. I'll show you what I mean though. So let's go negative one. And you'll notice what's that done. what that has done is it's shaved off the very top. 
So the bits that exceeded the threshold of negative one, control Z will undo, will open up our normal, not our normalizer, will open up our leveler, our limiter rather. Let's say we want to be very aggressive and do negative five for the purposes of illustration. It's cut off everything under that. Now you can do that if you want to, but it starts to make things sound very flat when you really chop things off bluntly. Let's undo that. Honestly, I think negative two is probably going to be our safest value. That's not a two, that's a one. There we go. <laughs> and I've applied the wrong tool. There we go. Negative two. There we go. So that's cut off a little bit. So now there's enough headroom at the top that when we apply this to bring it up uh, to negative one, so, and by this I mean applying our normalize, it's affected the entire project more uniformly, but we've not used the limiter uh, in such a way that it's going to really dramatically alter the output at the end. It's not going to make it sound flat and very unnatural. You are entering boundaries unknown. So sit back, shut up and hang on. That's not too bad. Now, the other thing we can do here, if we really want to, is copy the entirety of this and undo everything we've done. Don't worry, there is a reason for this. If we click on a uh, blank area here, control V to paste, we, we've got the bit that we copied. We've now got our original and we've got our altered version. So to listen to our original, part of it at least. You are entering boundaries unknown. And to listen to the new version. You are entering boundaries unknown. When you add the two together. You are entering boundaries unknown. So sit back, shut up and hang on. It has the effect of making it sound a little bit fuller, and I've seen this effect used in, in other applications as well. I don't mind actually uh, using that to, you know, to, to make that sound a bit rounder and fuller. What we're going to do here, because in a moment I'm going to want to cut up my project and it's easier to cut it up as a single unit rather than different tracks all at once, I'm going to output this to a single lossless track and then we'll start applying things from there. So we'll go ahead... Uh, hit file and export audio, select an area to do it. Control N will give us a new project and we can drag that in. Now, as you can see, that effect of, of you know, making the, it a bit more full bodied has made for some clipping here. That's okay. We know what to do about that. Let's go to our normalize tool. Actually, before we do that, let's try our compress effect. We don't need anything nearly as strong. 12 will do. Back to our normalize. Now let's just normalize it. Let's try that from the beginning. And this, by the way, is why I prefer to uh, play an entire project beginning to end as I'm doing it. It's all well and good to, to see someone do a project that they've done in advance, but honestly, it's better to just, you know, play around with things and see that this is how you figure things out as you go. You are entering boundaries unknown. So sit back, shut up, and you get the idea. So that's how we clean up our audio. Moving on.